this paper was uh, authored uh, by me and my mentor, uh, NSIT. So uh, it's the same paper, but I have done some updates, at least to give uh, the current situation as we have in, in Ghana. And this will be the outline. Uh, I will start by looking at the economic growth, uh, look at employment, unemployment, poverty and inequality, and then look at employment response to growth and how poverty has also responded to growth as well and employment and why, uh, the why question, why we are here and then the conclusion. Now, I think the story about Ghana, uh, since we recovered from recession in the early uh, 1980s, we haven't looked back. The country hadn't looked back. We haven't uh, gone back to any negative growth. I mean, growth has been quite strong. And in 2014, the country grew by 14%. So that shows how the country is doing. And we managed to attain uh, middle income status, uh, of course, after we did our rebase. But one major challenge has been uh, job creation uh, and inequality. So this is the economic growth pattern. So you look at 1980 to 2016. So you can see that before 1984, we had uh, negative growth. And since then, we've been up there. Uh, and the average, look at it, is better than the South African average. Then in terms of sect sectoral uh, composition trend, you realize that now we are moving from agric to service. So the green one is shrinking while the blue one is expanding. And in the middle, you see the yellow one, which is manufacturing, which is also shrinking. So there seems to be uh, some kind of uh, missing middle that uh, the country is confronted with. Now, this is employment and an unemployment situation. And this is about employment. And you look at employment in terms of sectoral uh, distribution, it mirrors the changing trend in the structure of the economy. And now you can see that in terms of employment, service account for the largest, about 46% followed by agriculture. But uh, if you look at the trend from 1984, it used to be agriculture being the dominant source of employment uh, followed by service, but the, the table has turned, which is in line with the structural change in the economy. And of course, in terms of quality of employment, informality is quite pervasive, and vulnerable employment is also high, uh, which is the fact that more than uh, two thirds of people who are working uh, are in vulnerable employment. Productive employment is just about a quarter. Now about unemployment rates, I will not go deep into the conceptual issue but if you look at unemployment, uh, you realize that uh, since 2006, we seem to be having worsening unemployment situation. The youth is the one in red, and then the overall 15 and above is the blue one. So uh, unemployment rate currently, of course, in 2015 uh, will be about 6.5%. But in terms of the youth, uh, you have it uh, also around 15%. Now, of course, unemployment rate happens to be higher among the educated than the uneducated. And from 2010 to 2015, you see, see that kind of trend. Uh, and interestingly, the high unemployment rate is among uh, those with secondary school education or high school education. And yesterday, when uh, Professor Saiti was making the point about free senior high school, it means that so are we making people acquire senior high school education and become unemployed. So what measures are we putting in place to ensure that when they get there, unemployment will not be a big issue? And just to tease out about unemployment in 2015 by a uh, program of education for the educated uh, labor force, you realize that unemployment rates lowest when it comes to those who pursue courses in education, but highest in terms of those with social science, business, and so on. So it also has something to do with the kind of program that you pursue. If you look at health, engineering, they are at the lower, lower end. Now I talk about poverty. Poverty in Ghana has been declining since 1991. So up to 2013, we had that kind of declining poverty. But unfortunately, the recent data 
shows that between 2013 and 2017, there was a marginal decline in poverty. So from 24.2% to 23.4%. So that is the marginal decline of poverty over the last four uh, years. And extreme poverty also declined marginally. But inequality had been increasing. So before 2017, we had declining poverty, inequality increasing. But now poverty is becoming a problem and inequality is still worsening. So that also brings a new dimension to Ghana's uh, structure. And the absolute poverty between 1991 and 2013, the number of people uh, found to be poor uh, have been declining up to 2013. But in 2017, it went up. So in Ghana, about 6.8 million people are known to be uh, are, are poor from 6.4 million in uh, 2013. Mm. And of course, uh, by 200,000 increase from extreme poverty. Now, so how does employment respond to growth in all this? Uh, employment growth uh, is found to lag behind economic growth. And as you can see from the graph, the green one being growth of employment and the red one being uh, economic growth. So anytime we have economic growth, we should expect that the rate of growth will not be marked by employment. So we tried to capture the elasticity uh, of, of, of employment as of output. And the, on average, uh, between 1920 and 2013, was 0.6. Uh, uh, uh. So it means that if economy grows by, let's say, uh, 1%, we expect employment to grow by 0.6%. And we, when we extended it to cover 2017, uh, we had uh, 0 0.5%. Uh, nine, three, which is almost the same. Then we try to look at uh, regression to capture the elasticity. And when we do the controls with all the basic econometric diagnostic done, we realize that uh, the employment elasticity is, is just about 0 0.2. So from the regression, you read that when we have a 1% growth of the economy, it's just 0.2% uh, employment growth. So that means employment response to economic growth is quite uh, limited. And that is why we had those employment uh, challenges there. And this is about poverty. And this poverty response uh, to employment, poverty response to productive employment. Of course, if you have more productive employment, you are bound to reduce poverty uh, quite uh, drastically. And that is why the elasticity is higher for productive employment than uh, of course, if you have the, the, the overall. But poverty response to growth uh, between 91 and 2017 uh, is 0.087. And that is the elastic. So even though uh, we are growing, how does poverty respond? It used to be high between 1991 and 1999. And it went down uh, in 1999 to 2006, appreciated a bit in 2013, and then went up again uh, between 2010 to 2017, but the average from 19 to 2013 is 0 0.087. So the why uh, question. Now, we have had this situation because we make the point that it has demand and supply kind of uh, uh, cost. So growth driven by low labor adoption sectors like uh, extractives, and of course, over the last two or three decades, decades the extractive sector has been the driving force of Ghana's growth. And when we discovered oil, it even uh, made it higher. Uh, we also have finance as well, but it looks like employment uh, capacity or employment absorption capacity there is not as high as you find in agriculture, manufacturing, and tourism. What I've seen is growth uh, shrinking and its size also shrinking as well. And this is the evidence to show you that between 2007 in 2017, the agriculture grew by 4.2%, manufacturing 3.2% on average, compared to extractive 27.8% and finance 12.0%. So from the growth perspective, see that these sectors that are considered by the literature as not uh, high labor absorption sectors are growing so fast, but those that we expect to be generating the employment labor intensive sectors uh, having a uh, growth. And of course, because of that, the size of the high labor absorption sectors are declining, while that of uh, high, uh, low employment generation sectors are, 
also growing. Then we look at the supply side. So we have the low quality of labor and slow pace of improvement in that. So if this is about the educational uh, attainment of the labor force. And as of 2015, just about 10.3% of the 16 million labor force have just about tertiary education. So you have 23.5% with no education, 49.5% having basic education. And if you combine these two, that gives you uh, about 70%. And that also explains why we have high informality. Because in effect, if you have majority of the labor force having just basic education, then the place for them will be uh, the informal sector. The formal sector captures those uh, with educated one. And that also explains why perhaps finance may not also generate that kind of uh, employment because it is a sector that attracts people with that high skill. And if you have that limited number of people with that high skill, then you are going to have the challenge. Then we have skill mismatch concern uh, in Ghana. So it's about the humanities and STEM. So this is just to tell you that between 2011 and 2014, uh, the educational output of public universities uh, favored those in the in the humanities, so education and social science uh, in 2014 account for about 60, uh, almost 70 percent of output. While uh, we have business, architectural, planning, applied science, and health counting for the remaining uh, 30 percent. So when we have that kind of mismatch, you are also bound to have the employment challenge. And this is about the polytechnic, which are now technical universities, the same uh, situation is found. Engineering and tech is just 22.3% in 2015 compared to 77.7% for those in business and management. So in conclusion, what are we saying? We are saying that growth driven by natural resource exploitation without value addition has adverse implications for jobs and inequality. And even though we have structural change from agriculture to service with a missing middle, this constrained generation of productive employment amidst income inequality. And of course, if we are able to link agriculture with light manufacturing, it could be the source of reversing the joblessness in a strong growth economy like we have in Ghana. So thank you.